the definition of a function. Okay, so hopefully you've talked about this in previous classes, but uh, let me phrase it maybe in a different way that you haven't heard before. One of the technical definitions of it says each element of the domain is paired with only one element of the range. Well, remember, domain is talking about x values. So in other words, what this means is for every x, there is only one y. Uh, hopefully you're familiar with the vertical line test. If you take a vertical line, um, if you take a vertical line and you pass it along your graph, then that line should only be touching one point of the graph at a time as you move it uh, left to right. So we'll look at a few different options in a second. But what an inverse function does is it switches the domain and range of a particular function. So it switches your x's with your y's. Uh, here's our notation. It looks like an exponent. It looks like an exponent of negative 1. It is not. That's the inverse notation. Uh, you read that f inverse of x and it's not f to the negative 1 of x. Okay? Uh, we can't use uh, uh, exponent rules to get rid of the negative exponent. It's f inverse of x. So first of all, let's look at, they call these like uh, function maps. So the first one here is the absolute value of x. Okay? f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. So the x values are over here on the left side. <clears throat> these are the x's. These are the y's on the right side. So what they're saying is, okay, if x is negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. So negative 3 maps to positive 3. Negative 2, the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. So negative 2 maps to positive 2. So forth and so on. So when you see only one line coming out of all your x's, that's a function. Every x is paired with only one y. So that means that negative 3 doesn't, all, doesn't also map to negative 2 or something like that. Okay? It only goes to the one y value. Now, our y values, though, they have two arrows at them except for zero. So what that means is the absolute value of x is a function. The absolute value of x is a function. Its inverse is not a function. Okay? Its inverse is not a function because its y values have multiple x values. So the absolute value of x is a function, its inverse is not. <clears throat> if we look at the graph, think about what the absolute value of x looks like. The absolute value of x is that V-shaped graph. Okay, if we did the vertical line test with that, okay, vertical line when we move it along the graph, we're good. It's only touching one point <laughs> at a time. But to test to see if its inverse is a function, we use the horizontal line test. So if I go horizontal here at almost any point, but at the vertex right here, I'm touching two points on the graph. So that's why its inverse is not a function. Okay. Uh, this other one over here, x plus 3, <coughs> if x is 0, 0 plus 3 is 3. So 0 maps to 3, 1 maps to 4, 2 maps to 5, 3 maps to 6, so forth and so on. Uh, this is a function. x plus 3 is a function. And its inverse is as well. Let's do that in red. x plus 3 is a function. And so is its inverse because those y values only have one x value. So if a function and its inverse are both functions, we call that one to one. 
every x has a y, has one y, every y has only one x. That is not the case over here. If y is 3, then we've got two possibilities, negative 3 and positive 3. So after by x is not 1 to 1, x plus 3 is 1 to 1. X plus 3 is a linear function, so it passes both vertical and horizontal line tests. Okay, <clears throat> so let's look at these graphs here. We've got the function and we've got the graph. So let's talk about whether their function or whether their inverse would be a function. All of these are functions. If we use a vertical line test on all of these, it passes. So I'm touching one point of the graph at all times. This one's a little close because it gets pretty vertical, okay, but it's never truly a totally vertical line. So graph two does pass a vertical line test. So does graph three, so does graph four. Okay? But we want to know is their inverse a function? Okay, is their inverse a function? So graph one. Would its inverse be a function? Yes. Okay, so graph one. Uh, how about graph two? No. Okay, graph two would not be because, say we look at a y value of two, it's got two x values that give a y value of two. <clears throat> so that inverse is not a function. Now, if we can cut off half the graph, that would be great. That's what part B is talking about. For each function that does not have an inverse, see if you can describe a restricted domain that would make it. If we kind of cut it off right here in the middle and we just like, forgot about the left side of this graph, then we would be okay. <clears throat> um, so that's what part B is talking about. If we said, well, just consider x values that are greater than or equal to zero, then we'll be okay. Or actually not equal to, so if we can't equal zero, just greater than. Then we will be okay. Okay, graph three. Is its function, or is its inverse a function? Nope. It also fails the horizontal line test. We can cut this one off in the middle. We could say as long as your x is greater than or equal to 3, you're okay. <clears throat> How about graph 4? No. So graph 1 is the only one that's 1 to 1. Um, <clears throat> graphs 2 and 3, we can restrict their domain. We can't restrict the domain of graph 4. Uh, and the reason why is, you may say, well, why not just cut it off in the middle? Well, if we cut it off in the middle, we're not, we're missing this part of the graph. That doesn't show up over here on the right side. So we can't really restrict the domain there on graph number four. Or even if we cut it off in the middle, we still uh, fail right there, okay? So we can't restrict graph number four. <clears throat> to fix the issue. Okay, so horizontal line test. Determines if the inverse will be a function. It works just like the vertical line test. You can only touch one point at a time. <clears throat> if you touch more than one point, it fails, so it would not be a function. <clears throat> okay, and then they just give you a graph. <clears throat> not give you the rule or anything like that, and they may just ask, is this uh, is the inverse of this function <clears throat> a function? And you just got to look at it. Does it pass the horizontal line test? Okay, easy as that. Okay, so let's talk about actually finding the inverse of a function. Let's find some rules. And here's the process for doing it. The definition of the inverse said that you 
switch the domain and the range. So that means we're switching x's and y's. So in the rules, what we're going to do is we're going to switch the x and y, then we're going to solve the equation for y, and at the very end, we're going to replace it with the inverse notation. So let's look at uh, example A there. G of x is equal to 3x. Well, remember, G of x is just a fancy way of saying y equals 3x. Okay, it's just a fancy way of saying y equals 3x. So, to find the inverse, we're going to switch x and y there. Okay, so inverse here. We're going to switch x and y. We're going to say x equals 3y. And we're going to solve for y. Right now, y is being multiplied by 3. So how do we get y by itself? Divide by 3. So x over 3 is equal to y. And in the very end, we're going to replace that y with inverse notation. So we started with g. So that means g inverse of x is equal to x over 3. Or that's the same thing as 1 third x. You may see it written like that. Okay, let's do another one. Got a little bit more with it. H of x is equal to 3x plus 5. Okay, remember h of x is just a fancy way of saying y. So when we find the inverse, we switch x and y. x is equal to 3y plus 5. We've got to get y by itself. So we start by subtracting the 5. x minus 5 is equal to 3y. And just like in the last problem, we're going to divide by 3, but you've got to divide that entire side over there by 3. <clears throat> so we have h inverse of x is equal to x minus 5 over 3. You may see it written like that. Or you can... Um, Divide both of those by 3 and write it like this. 1 third x minus 5 thirds. Those are equivalent to each other. I just divided both terms by 3. They're the same thing. Y'all try and do C. J of X is equal to 3X minus 7. Find the inverse function there for me. 